Good evening and welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Game 1 of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball 2012. My name is Peter Zimbor, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Newberts and Rateau. Tonight, the Lady Boxers welcome in the Sandwich Blue Knights, where will be both teams debut for the 2012 to 2013 season. Newby, another season upon us. Another season, Peter, I'm, I'm feeling very old right now. Another season, but um, definitely, you know, this is really, you know, one of my favorite parts of the season. You know, that's what I have to call the first quarter. First quarter, you try to find an identity of what type of team you're going to be. And it brought them box. I expect to, for them to come out very strong in the first few games. They have seven returning players, Peter. I don't know if you remember last year, they were a very young team, you know, you know getting experience. But this year, more experience, um, pretty much the same core, but I, I expect a fast start for the Brockton Boxers this season. Well, with a lot of returning players, we will see a lot of familiar names in the starting lineup, which consists of number 22, Tatiana Diaz, number 23, Chantel Jordan, number 33, Christian McDuffie, number 21, Dominique Cooley, and number 11, Chanel Melton for the Sandwich Blue Knights. Their starting five consists of Captain Eric Gendrow, Leah Adams, co-captain Sidney Miller, Julia Sullivan, and Carly Whittle. Four eight-minute quarters played in high school girls basketball. Brockton with the steal from the get-go. Chanel Melton with the basketball for Brockton. Melton inside to a wide-open Dominique Coley. Turns around, puts it off the board for two. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Dominique Coley. She said um, she's going to get 30 points and 20 rebounds tonight. So she's well on her way. That's an actual conversation you had with Anubi? An actual conversation I had with her a few hours before the game. She said she's going to get 30 and 20. Number 33 for Sandwich Connects, that being Carly Whittle, tying the game at 2 with 7 minutes and 21 seconds to go. Christian McDuffie with the ball. I believe the Lady Box is sporting brand new uniforms, very much in the same style as the old ones, but... Yeah. With some stripes added. Exactly. No, it's funny. Uh, you mentioned new uniform. I'm, I'm I'm looking at the new floor. Fantastic job by um, you know the, the, the AD's office. Um, you know implementing this new floor. Um, a lot lighter than the normal, but it looks absolutely outstanding. Logo looks fantastic. So um, kudos to um, whoever you know really spearheaded that on our outstanding new gym floor. Dominic Coley inside once again. Rebound. And jump ball is called inside the paint. Possession arrow points in favor of the Lady Boxers. Now that's two rebounds and two points, so maybe she, you know, she definitely knew what she was talking about before the game. Melton inbounds it to McDuffie. Up no good, draws a foul. She'll be going to the line where she will be shooting two. That is going to be called on number three for the Blue Knights, Eric Gendrow. 2-2 two -two is your score, 7-0-1 left to go in the opening quarter between the Lady Boxers and the Blue Knights. One of the best sporting events that you and I have ever had the privilege of doing play-by-play -play for, Nubi, was, that was sandwich. in Sandwich. It was Cardinal Spellman against, I believe, Martha's Vineyard. Division three high school basketball that ended up going into, I believe, double triple, over no, triple, tri triple, triple overtime. And if I remember correctly, Martha's Vineyard was way behind in the first half and came back and made it real interesting. But well, one kid had 48 points, and I gotta be honest with you, that was blatantly rooting for Martha's Vineyard. I just couldn't believe they had come back from an abysmal first half. Chanel Melton down low, out of bounds off McDuffie, sandwich ball. I remember Martha's Vineyard. At halftime, we said, is that not the worst basketball team you've ever seen in your life? Because nothing they did could have turned out any worse in the first half. They turned it on in the second half and made a great game out of it, and they lost in triple overtime to Cardinal Smallman. Nice deal by Christian McDuffie. Excuse me, that's not Christian McDuffie, but Tatiana Diaz on the steal for Brockton. Does not make her layup rebounded by Sandwich. 3 2 is your score. Brockton on top by a point. 6 14 left to go in the opening quarter. And Sandwich is going to have their first lead of the game as number 14 for the Blue Knights, Leah Adams, puts it off the glass and in. 4 to 3 is your score. Sandwich on top. Six minutes to go. And that was Coley missing down low. Yeah, Donnelly's got to make those right there. That's point bank range. But Peter, I'm already seeing earlier. I know the boxes are, the, the, the are down by a point, but. 
right. You can tell. I mean, the chemistry of this team is a lot better than it was last year. I mean, you know, defensively, offensively, this year, there's a little more rhythm. Very exciting to watch. Spread it, spread it, get it out of there. Get it clear. Short. Get back, get back. 12, 12, 12, 12. Got to push the bar right now for the Brockton boss. Got to push it. Coley with the rebound off the glass and in. Brockton retakes the lead 5-4. Yeah, you know, if it's sandwich right there, you got to find someone and box them out. I mean, you can't let, you know, Dominique get in there for the offensive board and just have no one contest it. You know, if we don't like how the box are walking up the basketball, I'm, I'm going to push it from them right now. I'm going to push the pace. Nice shot by uh, Jordan getting that first step on the baseline right there. Fall right here, they're going to take it in bounds. Take it out of bounds, excuse me. Turnover right there, and again, too much hesitation on offense right there. If you're, uh, you know, number 22 for the Broughton Box, Diaz, you know, you gotta be more aggressive. You know, if you have a shot, you just gotta go ahead and take it. 5-4 Brockton on top, 440 left to go in the opening quarter. Traveling called against Sandwich. That turns the ball over to the Lady Boxers. Lady Boxers coached by April Dingwell. Sandwich Blue Knights coached by Chris Gendrow. April Dingwell doing a fine job as the head coach for the Varsity Lady Boxers since taking over for Eric DiBiase as Sandwich Blue Knights retake the lead once again. Six to five, Brockton finds a player down low. That being number 23, Chantel Jordan whistle called down low and we're gonna see a Brockton player heading to the free throw line. Brockton Box is definitely good, getting, doing a good job with uh, second chance opportunities. Many offense boards for the Brockton Boxers. So it's Aliyah Brito at the line for Brockton shooting two foul called against number 21, Sydney Miller. First of two off the rim, no good. You know, I have a chance, but I never had a, uh, a, a chance to say um, good uh, good season for the Brockton Boxer football team. Obviously, it didn't end on a on the note they wanted to end with the Super Bowl championship, but uh, one heck of a season by them losing to St. John's Prep last week, but um, really a valiant effort. Outstanding season win the big three. So kudos to the football team. Boxer right now just dominating on the boards. Creating some silly turnovers, but uh, definitely on the, on the boards, Peter doing a great job. We'll be seeing a few of those Brockton players from the football team on the basketball court soon enough as we begin our coverage of Brockton Boxers men's basketball. Christian McDuffie taking it to the hole. No good, rebounded by Brockton. Back outside of McDuffie, short jumper, no good. Good job by Brito of getting that rebound down low, however. You know, Peter, they're missing these shots, but Brockton's getting what they want offensively. You know, those shots are gonna go in. They're definitely getting what they want. They're being more aggressive, attacking the basket. Those shots are gonna go in. I want Diaz to tick out of bounds, not in the bonus yet. And that's probably going to be a reaching call on Tatiana Diaz for Brockton. And Diaz will take a breather as Sharon Springsteed makes her first appearance of the game, sporting orange shoes.
So little offense, so little movement. Set a screen, do something. Wow. Good, good, good thinking right there by the brought the boxers. Um, bad execution, but sandwich. I mean, they gotta really, you know, have more movement on offense. I mean, the stagnant pass around perimeter. It's not gonna, you know, get you some points other than you know a, a, a shot from thirty. Aaron Hurley coming up the floor for Sandwich over to Shannon Mosher. She tosses this one up, connects for a three. So 9-5, you score Sandwich on top. Two minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Sandwich with the biggest lead either team has had in this game. Springsteed with the ball for Brockton inside the paint. Puts that one up awkwardly. No good. Brito with the rebound up and in. Draws the foul and one. She'll be going to the free throw line. Box is continuing to get second chance opportunities. Clean them up, clean up on those boards right there, and um, you know, just getting easy shots and uh, definitely a high advantage that the Brockton Boxers have in today's game. lead once again for Sandwich Aaron Gendrow 11-7 Blue Knights on top 2-12 left to go in the opening quarter Brito with the ball for the boxers in the corner for three no good that was Chantel Jordan rebounded however by Chanel Melton Melton puts it up and in Good maneuvering on her part. Gets Brockton within two. 11 to nine. You score 150 left to go in the opening quarter. Gendro loses the ball out of bounds, and it is going to be Brockton ball. Boxes once again, Peter. I mean, second chance opportunities. That's what's keeping them in the game right now. Sandwich refuses to box out. Nice drive on the baseline right there. If you're the Blue Knights, you got to help her on defense. Claps here on the paint. McDuffie ties the game at 11 for the boxers. A minute 30 to go. Three-point attempt by Genjo connects just as quickly as Brockton ties it up. Sandwich retakes the lead 14 to 11. And good defense being played by the Sandwich Blue Knights, and that is going to force a backcourt violation against Brockton, turning the ball over to Sandwich. You guys got to help, um, you know, if you're the boxers, you got to help your teammate. She's in trouble. She's being double teamed. You gotta come to the basketball and be the aggressor. Oh come on! That was good defense right there. You got built out the call. Good job by the Brockton boxes collapsing in. Three people in the perimeter. Now she has to get a point to the free throw line. Gendro once again at the line. Lots of substitutions for Brockton. We'll mention these players by name as they make their way into the contest. 15-14 your score. Sandwich on top and Gendro looking to extend upon that lead and she will do just that. 16-11. to Sandwich on top. 105 left to go in the opening quarter. Nice defensive play by number 15 for Sandwich. Caroline McKenna. From inside the perimeter, Sandwich the short jumper, no good. Out of bounds, off Sandwich. Brockton ball, 50.4 seconds left to go in the first. McDuffie with the rebound, puts it up and in. Cuts the deficit to three for Brockton. Front court right now, too big for, for, for the Blue Knights to uh, to block out. Brockton have a chance to tie the game right now with a three. I'll cut this down to one point. Here we go, double it, double it, Evan, deny, deny, deny. Get back here. 
Dangerous pass right there. Box has got bailed out. Last touch by Sandwich. And the first quarter comes to an end. Your score sandwich 16 at Brockton 13. Newbie, you were talking about in spurts, liking what you were seeing from the Lady Boxers, but when all is said and done, most of that quarter was led by Sandwich. That is correct, Peter. That is 100% correct, but um, I still like what I see by the Brockton Boxers in the first quarter, especially on the def on the offensive glass. Um, definitely gain easy second chance opportunities. Well, I like to see the Brockton, you know, the Boxers to do in the second quarter has continued to push the basketball. You know, even rather, you know, even after a make by Sandwich, you have to push the basketball. I think the Brock the Brock have an advantage. I think they're faster than the Sandwich to really push the ball and get easy opportunities going to the basket. Um, you know, defensively, the Brock the Boxers, I don't think are, are bad. You know, Sandwich is just making their shots. They're making their perimeter shots. You know, they you know they made they made two threes, I believe, in the first quarter. So they're making perimeter shots. Give kudos to them, but the Brock the Boxers live with that. But in, in, in terms of offensively, when they brought the boxes, when they get the ball, quick outlet pass and push the basketball. Do not walk up the ball up the court. You want to push the basketball, put pressure on the defense, and, and, and get easy um, chances offensively. As we took a look inside the sidelines of both Brockton and Sandwich, respectively, in between quarters, we have head coach Chris Gendro and his assistants Marty Cosgrove and David Acock for the Sandwich Blue Knights and for the Brockton Lady Boxers, head coach April Dingwell. Her assistants are David Ray and Stephanie Savas. Was David Ray one of your teachers as a high school student, newbie? David Ray was one of my advisors in the, um, the STEP program. He did a fantastic job, you know, helped me with my college applications. I actually got a funny story uh, about Mr. Ray, um, me and Mr. Ray, you know, he's a Yankee fan, so we always give each other a, a hard time. Uh, he, he, you know, he was poking fun at me. He said, "Newbie, have you gone national yet?" You know, thinking it was a joke. And I said, "Actually, Mr. Ray, I have gone national." And I will tell everyone why that is true in the second half. I'm sure that they're on the edge of their seats waiting upon that tease. Why has Newbie gone national, or how has Newbie gone national? Coming up in the second half, three-point attempt by Sandwich, no good. Rebounded by McDuffie for Brockton. Gives it over to Chantel Jordan, down low, all alone. Chanel Melton. Less than seven minutes to go in the half. Brockton trailing by three, 18 to 15 is your score. See Peter right there, go right to the basket, push the offense, push the button, continue to attack the basket, you, up, you get opportunities like that, possible three-point play. Boxers pushed it, they had a three-on-one opportunity, and good stuff like that happens. Tatiana Diaz looking to tie the game for the Lady Boxers with six minutes and 37 seconds left to go in the half. Brock controlling by one, 18 to 17. Diaz at the free throw line. Rebounded by Brockton, puts it up and in. Dominic Coley gives Brockton the lead for the first time in the second quarter, 19 to 18. You know, Dominic, a volleyball player, so definitely um, outstanding leaping ability, and, and you can see that on, on, on these rebounds. Tatiana Diaz with some fancy maneuvering, dribbling the ball. Can she go coast to coast? She draws the foul. She'll be heading to the free throw line. Tatiana Diaz at the free throw line quite a bit in these last few minutes. I'm a big fan of Diaz right there. Just going to the basket. I mean, a little bit of a ESPN primetime right there. She went whoop, then whoop, then whoop, then whoop, then whoop, and right to the basket right there. That's what I like to see. Still a junior, too. 
She could be scary next year. Outstanding ball handling skills, great uh, knack of going to the basket. Look on over the back, it looks like on uh, on Dominique Coley, she just gives a stare to the referee like, don't you dare, you're better than that. <laughs> nice steal by the Blue Knights. Blue Knights looking to retake the lead and can have a foul called against Dominique Coley for Brockton and Sandwich will be heading to the free throw line as Aliyah Brito will be checking back into the ball game momentarily for the Lady Boxers. Good job by Dominique right there. Um, but if you're McDuff, you gotta go to the basketball. I mean, she was, she was built up by Dominique on that on that play right there. But if you're, if you're, if you're McDuffie, the ball is coming towards you, you gotta attack and, 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 and really play the ball. Great job, Jake. That's way to play. Box is definitely um, put up a few notches on the intensity meter. Well, Chance P, just want to give a shout out to Dr. Zach. He's in the house today. This is um, her actually last basketball season. And she'll be retiring at the end of this month. Definitely a great supporter of the Brock and Box, so all, all sports. I predict that Dr. Zach will come out to sporting events even after retiring. Oh, definitely. I think she's going to be pretty darn bored in the weeks after retirement. It's going to feel like a good idea for a few weeks. Then she's going to be bored out of her mind. That's my prediction, Dr. Zach, exactly. if you're watching. You know, Pete, I never understood the, the mentality of a jump ball. If you just harass somebody and just assault somebody, but your hand is on the ball, it is a jump ball and not a foul. That is not a jump ball. That is a foul. I, it baffles me. It's not just here. It's in, Another jump ball called. It's in it's in college professionals. If you just, I mean, you can literally tackle somebody. If you hold on to the ball, jump ball. Unbelievable. What I was getting at with that Dr. Zach comment, she's still young. She's still got pep in her step. It doesn't seem like someone at retirement age. Hey, you know what? That's a good. If you got a little pep in your step, why would you retire? You don't have no pep in your step. You want to have some fun. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's what she's thinking, newbie. As far as I'm concerned, Peter, I'm retiring when I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> retiring when I'm 30. Yeah, I'll retire right now. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I remember an interview with Beyonce of Destiny's Child years back. Do I have to yeah, say of Beyonce. Destiny's Child? She is just Beyonce at this point. Beyonce is my ex-wife, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sandwich retakes the lead 21-20. 4.50 to go. And Beyonce said by the time she's 30, she wants to have kids, wants to be married, and she doesn't want to work. Well, she got two of those three. Yeah, she's still working. Brockton reclaims the lead 22-21 as the crowd erupts here inside Staff Gymnasium, 426 to go. Yes. <laughs> so Ch Chanel just takes a whack at one of the sandwich players. <laughs> and the foul is called. She's like, what did I do? It wasn't me. I was like, I was like when uh, I remember uh, a couple years ago, Doc Rivers told Kendrick Perkins 
to foul somebody intentionally. He fouled somebody, and the referee caught a foul. <laughs> and he gave the referee look like, what did I do? Me? Speaking of Celtic, Celtic, step up. I'm calling you out right now on public TV. Step up. I'm calling you out. They're all watching, newbie. And they're all watching. <laughs> Tie game 22-22, 4.20 to go in the half. Brockton with the ball. Tatiana Diaz over to Chantel Jordan from the outside. No good. Rebounded by the Sandwich Blue Knights, who will bring the ball back down the other way. The ball pressure by Jordan. Oh, wow. Could have been, been caught a travel right there. Melton's got to go up stronger right there. She wanted a call, but if you went up stronger, a call probably would have happened. Got to go up stronger on that. Three-point attempt by Sandwich. No good. Get the rebound outside the perimeter. Another three-point attempt coming. This one also no good. Brock with the rebound. It's Diaz coming down with it for the Lady Boxers. I got to tell you what. As this season goes on, I'm going to be a big fan of Diaz. I've, I've liked her game so far. Brock does as well. Ooh and on. I'm going to get a lot of newbie credit. Actually, three newbie credit points to Diaz. She's on top right now. First newbie credit of the season. First newbie credit season. is the BCA equivalent of Tommy points on Celtics broadcasts. Is that the is that the equivalent to Tommy points? It's better than Tommy points. It's triple a Tommy point. So don't go there. Tough guy. Brito with the rebound for Brock and gets it over to Diaz. This is the outside to Melton. Short jumper, no good. Rebounded by the Blue Knights. Tie game still less than three minutes to go in the game. Sandwich retakes the lead. That is number 10, Aaron Hurley. 24-22, Sandwich on top. Melton, short jumper, no good. Brito vying for the rebound. Diaz ultimately comes up with it for Brockton, and we have a whistle-blown foul if, call down low. If, I'll tell you, Peter, if they're going to call that jump ball, I was going to lose it. I was going to lose it right here, Peter. Going to flip over this table? I was going to flip over this table. Now, how do I come back from that? Because this is a game tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't flip over a table, Noby. Unacceptable behavior. One day I will do that, Peter. One day I'm going to be, I'm going to be so... Oh, come filthy, on. Newbie. I'm going to be so filthy rich. <laughs> <laughs> that you're a complete jerk to people? I'm going to flip over a table and discuss it and just walk away. Everyone's going to say, who's that jerk? That's gonna be, that, that is a dream of mine. And I will accomplish that dream. When I do that, Peter, then I'll know that I made it. Get back! Get back! Shannon is trying to get back! Diaz does a fantastic job going to the basket, but one thing, she, she used to work on finishing. You know, she definitely has, um, you know, the moves of getting to the basket at will, but, you know, she, she needs to work on finishing stronger. Just over two minutes on the clock here in the first half. Brockton trailing sandwich 24-23, and we've got a call that will go against Brockton. It'll be on Sharon Springsteed, and this will send Aaron Gendrow to the line for the Blue Knights. The Blue Knights definitely are not a pushover. They're 15 and 8 last year, so um, definitely a very solid season.
Putting the shot clock back to 20. 150 left in the first half. Diaz with the ball over to Springsteed for a three, no good. Rebounded by Brockton Melton with the ball now. She'll put it up off the glass and in. Nice strong move down the baseline, Peter. Quick first step right there, good power move. Brockton on top, 25-24. Sandwich trying to take back the lead with a three, no good. Melton with the rebound for Brockton, less than a minute and a half to go in the first half of play. Melton we'll call gets called for traveling. Ball. And the crowd just loses it. A clear travel right I must there. say, I like the fact that this crowd is enthusiastic and passionate from the get-go oh, here in game one. It's, it's, a, it's outstanding, Peter. It's my basketball's my favorite sport. Gotta love it. McDuffie with the rebound for Brockton. McDuffie for three, nails it with the defender right in her face. Brockton on top, 28-24, less than a minute to go in the half. Boxers want to make a push right here. Last minute, they want to make a push, get some momentum going to halftime. Strong defensive stance right here. They hold right here, Peter. It's 11 second. Um, difference between the shot clock and the game clock. They hold sandwich to uh hold sandwich right here defensive. They're gonna have the last shot going to going to the second half. McDuffie with the ball, stops and pops. She was thinking three again, no good. This was inside the perimeter, however. Springsteen with the rebound to McDuffie inside the paint, off the glass, and in McDuffie gives Brockton a six-point lead with 12 seconds to go in the half. Great body control right there by McDuffie. Going to the basket strong, watch baseline. Yes, And that's number 24 for a sandwich. Julia Sullivan making it a four-point game. 30 to 26. So we've reached the midway point of this contest. Brockton on top, 30 to 26 at halftime. A brisk pace, competitive action in the first half of play, Nubi. Oh, Peter, fantastic uh, game so far here by both teams. Uh, I like the way the Brockton box are just completely dominating the, the boards. Completely dominating. That's the reason why they're up by four points right now. Easy second chance opportunities. Very impressed with Diaz so far, doing a fantastic job going to the basket, pushing the basketball. Um, and if Boston continues in the second half, they should be all well on the way for a victory. Well, it's been a competitive game thus far. Brockton 30, Sandwich 26. You're watching BCA Sports. We'll step aside for a quick breather. Back with second half action after this. And we return for second half action here at Staff Gymnasium in Brockton, Massachusetts, where as we enter the second half, the Brockton Lady Boxers are leading the Sandwich Blue Knights by a score of 30 to 26. Peter Zimbor and Nubi Rateau courtside calling the action on this brand new court. I love the new Boxers logo mid-court. Much more stylish than the old one in my opinion. Mashed potatoes and gravy, Peter. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, everything's just gravy right now for, for the Brockton Boxers. Um, the court looks fantastic. Um, actually, ironically, I was actually talking to somebody. They actually booked the actual box and logo, though. It was the wrong way. It's actually supposed to be the other way facing the home crowd. It's how Sandy Fresca is facing our camera. But court looks beautiful. Uh, New Jersey's. It was funny. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, Jimmy Melton, actually brother of uh, uh, Chanel Melton. He, you know, he mentioned, you know, right now they brought the boxes to remind him of the Brooklyn Nets. New Jersey, somewhat new court. Um, you know, just, just, you know, some players coming in who are, you know, veteran players as well as new additions, as, as we uh, found out during, uh, during halftime. Diaz is actually, Tatiana Diaz is actually from Southeastern. She transferred over here to, uh, to, uh, to Brockton High. So new additions, new, new Jersey, new court. So um, similar traits of the Brooklyn Nets. Tatiana Diaz, as a sophomore, led the Southeastern Regional Hawks deep into the MIAA playoffs last year, that Division III basketball, and faring quite well for herself tonight in her Division I debut for the season. 
Diaz with the ball right now for Brockton. Inside to a wide open Chanel Melton off the glass and in. Brockton leads by 6, 32, 26, 7, 34 to go in the third quarter. Nice help defense right there by the Brockton Boxers. And McDuffie goes to the hole, count the bucket and one. She'll be going to the line. Brockton may have themselves a nine point lead if McDuffie is able to convert at the free throw line less than a minute in to the third quarter. McDuffie is, is one of the best players I've seen in terms of her body control going to the basket and just, you know, um, creating contact and, 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 and using that contact to her advantage. Said to restart the shot clock. No other chance. Just want to, um, you know, I mentioned the first half. The trivia question of the day was why. I'm not sure it was officially the trivia question well, of the day, but you teased it. Well, it's trivia question now. Okay. It's official trivia question, sponsored by nobody. Um, <laughs> so anyway, the, the question was, you know, why is Nubi national? As I was um, in the first half, I was, you know, as I mentioned, nice offensive board right there by Coach. He's an absolute monster counted in the foul. Big dog coming through. <laughs> Dominique Coley gives Brockton an 11 point lead, 37 26, trying to make it 12 points with 6.46 left to go in the third quarter. Excuse me for that outburst. But anywho, I was talking to. Um, I heard a dog somewhere. Yeah, it was a. Uh, the newbie bark. I was actually known for that in, in, in high school. Since retired it for a few years, but I, I but it back, came out of you now. Yeah, you know the bark comes out once in a while. It's, just, it's nothing planned. It's just when I'm you did it. used to bark in high school. Yeah. I remember that. You know when you know when I'm pumping this bark. Interesting story about about barking. I know I'm sidetracking a lot right now. Um, I'm in a flag football league and I'm defensive end <laughs> on Sundays. And whenever I rush the quarterback, I bark. <laughs> It's like, say, hi. Let's go, push it. Brockton with the rebounds down low, puts that up, no good. Rebounded by the Sandwich Blue Knights. Referee's letting them play down low. Shoots from the parking lot. So that trivia question, newbie. As I was saying, um, Mr. Ray's a Yankee fan, you know, I'm a Red Sox fan, so we always give each other a hard time. So, um, Mr. Mr. Ray, assistant coach of the Brockton Lady Boxers. So, uh, Mr. Ray says, you know, Nubia, I see you here in Brockton again. I, I see you, you haven't gone national yet. And I said, Mr. Ray, as a matter of fact, I've had go I have gone national. I, just, I like to stay around the commoners, you know, to keep people like you company. And um, he said, why have you gone national? Well, um, very fortunate. Uh, a good friend of mine, Paul Mandeville, actually directing this game. You know, he mentioned I should really um, look into the station called Punch TV Network um, that, that really broadcasts urban programming for my documentaries. Um, so I recently finished a documentary on fatherhood that had rave reviews. Uh, definitely, I think everyone is safe to say they enjoyed it once they seen it. We sent it over to Punch TV Network. They loved it. And we... Last week signed a two-year contract with them. Nice block right there by Coley. Get away from Oprah. And Melton loses the basketball ultimately to Sandwich. Brockton gets it back. Dominique Coley to Springsteed. Springsteed off the glass. No good. Brockton with another rebound. McDuffie off the glass and in. 40 to 26 year score. Brockton with a 16-point lead. It has been all Brockton since they have come out of halftime. Excuse me, that is a 14-point lead with 5.27 to go, but Brockton looking dominant here in the early portions of the second half, Newby. Brockton coming out with a 10-0 run, just completely um, dominating on, on the boards. But let me just finish the story. Um, Newby Productions has signed a two-year contract which Punch TV Network out of California, which will broadcast the documentary Step Up 
to over 40 cities around the country over 40 times as much as 75 times over the next two years. So really excited about that. Great opportunity for for um, for, uh, for for the production myself and, and the rest of the team to um, to get a real public eye nationally. So uh, that's why when Mr. Ray said maybe have you gone national it actually was not a joke. It was uh, it's pretty um it was pretty serious stuff. So in your face, Mr. Ray. Once again, Nubi Ratto wins. Nubi Ratto 100, Mr. Ray 5. Now, Mr. Ray was your advisor in the STEP college program when you were in high school? Yes, he was. So you still call him Mr. Ray as opposed to David Ray? Yeah, I can't call him David Ray. You're always Mr. Ray to me. Count the bucket and 1 4 sandwich. That is Leah Adams, 42. 28, Brockton now leads 5-10 left to go in the third quarter. Talked a little bit earlier about some of our fondest memories of Sandwich. That triple overtime playoff game between Cardinal Spellman and Martha's Vineyard that you and I called. Sandwich also the site of our cameraman Aaron Tebow's wedding. Well, let me tell you something about Sandwich I really don't like. Went to Sandwich a couple years ago for that epic playoff game between Cardinal Spellman and Martha's Vineyard. I know what you're getting at. Outstanding playoff game. Great outlet pass right there. Well, actually, it's not a great outlet pass, but good thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, so during halftime, people like to eat, and they ran out of food. Now, how can your town be called Sandwich and you run out of food? And they weren't serving sandwiches to begin with, just pizza. It's pizza, but if, you're, if your town is called Sandwich, first of all, I want a sandwich. Number one, you should be serving sandwiches. We were going to get a sandwich before the game, but we didn't have enough time. So we said, oh, we'll get something at the arena at halftime. So at halftime, we went to get food. They were all out of food. They ordered more pizza to sell, which, of course, we could not get because by the time it got there, the second half was underway. So we ended up getting Chinese food on the way home. And it was delicious. It was delicious. <laughs> And after that, actually, we went to uh, we went bowling with um, former assistant GM <laughs> Carl Pride. That was an eventful, eventful <laughs> night. I forgot about that. That was the night we went bowling. <laughs> and then I, we all got up for work the next day. Yes. I know everyone watched right now. I was like, who cares? McDuffie down low once again. Lays it in. 42-30. Brockton on top. 409 left to go in the third quarter. McDuffie what has right gotten now, into Brockton here in the second half, newbie? Just be more aggressive on offense. But Peter, like I mentioned before, Sandwich's offense, they were just making their shots from the perimeter in the first half. They weren't necessarily great shots. Fantastic move right there. As I say that by Sandwich going to the baseline, but they were selling for perimeter shots. No baseline help defense by Sandwich right now. Boxes this out. First step is too quick. It's like Sandwich is, is stepping on quicksand. And right now, Peter, the Brockton, I mean, excuse me, the Sandwich Blue Knights hit to realize they're not down by 25. They're down by 12 points, down by, you know, three or four possessions. They're playing almost rush basketball offensively. They need to relax, run their offense, play good defense, and 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 and, and play this, you know, this offense that the Sanders is playing. It's like, you know, it's like hot potato. Run your offense, you're only down by 12, and it's only the third quarter. Plenty of time. Relax. Run your unit the way you run your unit. In the words of Jack Nicholas. Do you remember where that line was from, Peter? I don't. That line was in from a few good men. Jack Nicholas, Jack Nicholas said, I run my unit the way I run my unit. 2.50 to go in the third quarter, 44-32, Brockton on top. 
Not your favorite line from a movie that you'd like to bring up during basketball season, however. That comes from the movie Training Day with Denzel Washington. Yes, and I'll bring it out one of these days. 44-34, Brockton on top. As the Lady Boxers have the ball, that is Chantel Jordan, no good. Sharon Springsteed with the rebound out to Chanel Melton. McDuffie down low, off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Brito, off the glass and in. Aliyah Brito. You know, it's got to be a, a downer, you know, when Sandwich plays solid defense and then an offensive rebound right there just puts it in back in for an easy two. It is tough to really stay in this game. Nice three right there. If, if you're giving the opposition, you know, second and third and fourth opportunities at the basket. Melton trying for three. No good into the hands of a sandwich player, Aaron Gendrow. Aaron Gendrow nearly loses the basketball. She does. Picked up by a sandwich player, however, that being Callie Dolan. Tosses it up. No good. Brito comes up with it. Gets it down to Chanel Melton ultimately, and she is fouled. She'll be going to the line where she will be shooting too. Duffy with the ball, gets it over to Jordan. Jordan loses it, but is she fouled? I believe she is, she'll be going to the line. Brockton at the free throw line again. Been finding himself there quite a bit tonight. Sandwich for three, no good. Rebounded by Brockton. Diaz with the ball. Lays it up and in going coast to coast. Tatiana Diaz, Brockton leads by 12. 49-37, under 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. Traveling called against the Blue Knights. What the Brockton Boxers have done the last two quarters is putting on runs during the last two minutes, hence gaining momentum to start the quarter. Fantastic job by the Brockton Boxers, finishing out each quarter very strong. I'll tell you what, Coley's been everywhere. Brockton Boxers just dominating the paint. It's unfair. It's unfair. He's completely taking over the, the paint. An establishing position, establishing ownership. Tonight, Nick, tonight. Baseline. Chantal Jordan gets Brockton over the 50, 51 37. Sandwich trying to answer back with a three pointer. No good. Brockton with the rebound. That was. Giannisha Silva Moore, the sophomore with the rebound. First time we've seen her tonight. Less than three seconds to go in the quarter and the ball goes out of bounds with just six tenths of a second remaining. <laughs> and the third quarter ends. Brockton 
with the lead 51 to 37. We'll see quite a bit of substitutions on the part of the Sandwich Blue Knights here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. For most of the first half, despite the fact that Brockton ended off the first half with the four point lead, for most of the first half, Sandwich was on top, Newby. However, that has not been the case whatsoever here in the second half thus far. Brockton coming out looking like a team possessed in the third quarter. Mashed potatoes and gravy, Peter. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, they brought them boxes. You know, like I mentioned before, in the first half, I wasn't that impressed with Sandwich playing basketball offensively, especially because they were getting a lot of perimeter shots. You know, I said, you know, you live by the three, you die by the three. You know, live by the jump shot, you die by the jump shot. A lot of jump shots by the, by the, uh, by the Sandwich Blue Knights. One thing I liked with the Brock, the boxes were doing the first half, that that was eventually going to make them completely dominate the second half, and my prediction seems to be correct, is the ability for the Brock the Boxes to get second, third, and fourth opportunities at the glass. I mean, the Brock the Box have been completely dominating the, the, the rebound situation, and I think that's really one of the main reasons why they're up by 14 points. Multiple opportunities for Brockton Diaz with the short jumper inside the perimeter, no good. Keep getting those rebounds, Brockton. Dominique Coley ultimately puts it off the glass and in 53-37 Brockton with the lead, 7.30 to go in the game. That was five opportunities right there, Peter. Five opportunities. That's what you call controlling the boards, newbie. I, I, you are correct, Peter. Right about that in the textbook of basketball. Yeah, textbook book of basketball knowledge, uh, section five, what it is, two, uh, part one, I believe. Keep on getting one or two confused. There's ordinances in this textbook? Yeah, ordinances, yeah. Wow. I memorize every one. Actually, any rule right now, I, I, I'll tell you. Ordinance 16, part 3A. Ordinance 16, part 3A simply states that you must go to the game with your shoelaces tied tightly, both sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about uh, pumping up your Reebok pumps? No, that's ordinance section C. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Eat up your basketball knowledge, Peter. Let's go. Was it D. Brown who used to wear the Reebok pumps for the Celtics back in the day? Yeah, he did. We famously uh, showed him during the Sam Dunk competition. The last time I saw D. Brown was at a hotel in Springfield after a night spent, no lie, with Rodney King and Jose Canseco. Wow. <laughs> you know what I saw yesterday? Who's that? I saw Kevin Falk. Yes, you told me you saw Kevin Fox from the New England Patriots. Oh, formerly the New England Patriots at Old Country Buffet, right? Yeah, Old Country Buffet over in Walpole. I'm in Springfield coming out from a fun night with Rodney King and Jose Canseco. At the hotel in the lobby, I go, are you D. Brown? He says, yes, I am. What was he doing there, just watching the fight? D. Brown, well, D. Brown was there. He apparently was, perhaps he still is, coaching the NBA D-League team out of Springfield. Remembered me from a radio show that I had produced as well. Very nice guy, D. Brown. I once asked him prior to a Celtics Magic playoff game. Of course, he began his career with the Boston Celtics. Finished with the Orlando Magic. I said, who do you root for in a game like this? He said, once a Celtic, always a Celtic. There you go. Three-pointer by Sandwich. Still Brockton on top by 13. Good call right there by the ref, double dribble. Over the back foul.
Leah Brito with the ball, lays it up, and in. they're going to discount that bucket due to a traveling call against Brito. 5.33 to go. Brockton still leads 55-42. The referee's hearing it from the crowd. You agreed with the call, however. It's a very good call. And that's going to be a reaching call going against Chanel Melton. I was wondering if I was, if I, if I had a son or a daughter, am I going to be that crazy person, you know, yelling from the, from the stands? I can see you doing that and thoroughly embarrassing your children Because I, I'm like that with my little nephews, but not as, I mean, you know, it's definitely, uh, it's not my kid, but, you know, I went to my little nephew's game actually before the Super Bowl. Brock and I actually was playing over in West Virginia. I went to his game. Is it a football game or basketball? It was a basketball game. Okay. And um, he was a, he was a tall kid for his age. Coast to coast, right there by Melton, and uh, I was pretty I was pretty fired up. So I was wondering, you know, if you know if it's my kid, how will I be? Only time will tell. I remember when I played for the Hancock League when I was a kid, a coach getting ejected for getting a little bit too passionate in his debates with officials. I've always, I want to do a little coaching too, which I will do uh, very soon, probably the next one or two years or so, I'll get into a little coaching. Yeah, I think I'm a good motivator. I may not be the greatest coach of all time, but I think I'm a good motivator. Like Dennis Wilson? Like a Dennis Wilson type. You and I made note of this last year in the Brockton playoff game against Madison Park in the men's basketball playoffs. Madison Park did not even warm up for that game due to Dennis Wilson wanting to give his team a motivational speech prior to the game. Didn't even warm up at halftime. It was funny, I followed um, Coach Wilson during um, a football game as he coaches football, and it's, it's, it's the same thing. He talks so much, the team doesn't have a chance to warm up. I thought you were going to say you followed him on Twitter. And I was going to say, if there's anyone that should have a Twitter, it's that man. <laughs> Let's get on that immediately. You know, he probably does have a Twitter. I'm going to search that later. You know, Dominic definitely does have 30 points, but she's close to 20 rebounds in this game. 62 to 44, Brockton looking for a 20 point edge. This was a competitive game for a half, but with 3.35 left to go in the game, Brockton well in control. really give some newbie credit to the, to the crowd. The crowd gets five newbie credit points for their energy. Traveling called against Melton. So does the crowd have more newbie points than Tatiana Diaz tonight? Yes, yes Five to three, wow. Yes, yes. 
That is correct, Peter. I just rolled differently, Peter. I don't know how Tatiana Diaz feels about that. I think she probably feels she had more to do with the score of this game right now than the crowd. Well, I the, run my unit the way I run my unit. McDuffie with the rebound. Over to Melton. Melton off the glass and in. 20 point lead, Brockton. I'm sorry. It, you can't go to the basket that easily without, without feeling some type of contact. You know, someone tried to fuck the shot or it were even a foul. If you're the Blue Knights, Chanel Mouth is going to the basket. You gotta make her earn it. Let's go. Speaking of that, speaking of making someone earn it, we talked about this before the before the game of a player score 138 points. Uh, Division three basketball. I gotta tell you what, if I'm coaching a team and my opposition scored 100, it's scoring not even 100, it's scoring more than 40. But I believe when they go to the basket, they're gonna they're gonna they're, 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 they're gonna they're gonna feel something. Number four checks into the game for Chantel Jordan. Number four. Giornacia Silva Moore. That's an awesome name. Giornacia. What a hundred sophomore. Well, Peter, what do you think about this 138 points? I mean that, that that's ridiculous. I don't think that it's even possible if the other team the other team just must not have played defense. I mean, that was a college game as Diaz lays it in, giving Brockton another 20-point lead, 66-46, with just over two minutes to go in the game. But think about this. That's a college game, two 20-minute halves. It's hard to score 138 as a team. How many points must have that kid scored per second in a 40-minute game? Like I said, it's next to impossible unless the opposing team just did not play defense. You no, know, I'm going to do some research on this. I'm going to actually search on YouTube and try to watch the whole game or something. They must have it on YouTube or something. Let me do the math right now. How many points? 138? 138 points. I don't think that's true. I think it's factually incorrect. 138 and, and into the, 40. And the opposing coach should be fired if he allows the opponent to score 138 points. I mean, 138 points. Did you hear that story? They scored 138 points in one game. You heard that? Yeah. Newey's having does, a discussion with the happen? scorekeeper from the opposing team. It's hard for a team to score 138 points. I don't think that's correct. I'm baffled. And everyone on the sandwich bench is agreeing with me. Maybe they were playing the Washington Generals. But I don't know. I'm, 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 I'll tell you what, I'm going to do my research on this. I'm really going to do my research on this. That I'm kid's really gonna have gonna a Facebook. It. You can Facebook him. Ask him for yourself. Traveling violation. Where's it going? Where's it going? Right towards me. Look at the outlet pass. Newbie credit. <laughs> Sandwich bench is starting to get a kick out of you, newbie. <laughs> you know, Pete, I've always wanted to be a professional basketball player. That was like my dream. In the third grade, I used to stress whether I wanted to move for the Celtics or Lakers. Diaz with the pick. Pickpockets. The opposition takes you to the hole. 70 to 46, Brockton on top. Shabba shabba woo! Just over a minute to go in this game. You know, Pierre, I got to tell you what, I'm really excited about the Brockton Boxing Program the next few years. Um, I was watching the JV game. I, I've been, I was really impressed with the few players that they had. And I got to tell you what, Peter, it's not just coincidence, new court. 
you know, New, New Jersey's look good. He played good. I don't know. I don't know. Some substitutions on the part of Brockton. Another sophomore, Natasha Elias, checks into the game. Also, number 24, Catherine Lewis, a sophomore, into the game. Number 14, Nadia Montero, in as well. And number 20, Daliana Montero. So Elias will inbound the ball to Silva Moore, and it's picked by Sandwich. No good Silva Moore with the rebound. She loses it to Sandwich. And that'll be number 23 for the Blue Knights, Casey Noonan. And Wide open, Sandwich Blue Knights. Brockton on top, 70 to 50, 13 seconds to go in this game. And Newby, if you're head coach April Dingwell, you've got to be pleased with the way your team has performed in game one of the season. Here at home at Staff Gymnasium as Elias perhaps tries to get one more shot up before the buzzer sounds. No shot will be taken. Brockton, a dominant second half, and they finish off with a 20 point win. 70 to 50, your final score. The Brockton Lady Boxers looking excellent tonight against the Sandwich Blue Knights. Newbie, your final thoughts? Mashed potatoes and gravy, Peter. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, the Brockton Boxers definitely um, stepped up today. I was very impressed with, um, you know, how everyone, the offense was spread out. You know, completely dominating on, on, on the board with, with Dominique uh, and, and company. I thought Chanel played a fantastic game. I thought Diaz was outstanding. Um, I really thought uh, McDuffie was uh, you know, really, really the star of the game today. Um, good stuff for the Brockton Boxers. You gotta build on this. It's one win, but it's uh, definitely a good solid win uh, uh, you know, against a formidable opponent. So it's, it's time for the Brockton Boxers to build on this. Formidable opponent indeed, as Sandwich was a playoff contender last year. Your final score from Staff Gymnasium, Brockton 70. Sandwich 50. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports and entire crew, my broadcast partner, Nubi Rateau, I'm Peter Zimbor. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Shabba shabba woo!